Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today as we get into all the happenings of today, which is actually quite a lot, we've got a little bit to get through, and also what went down tonight in the, um, the charity match that was deemed uh, the match for hope, and... Um, it's it was it was for a good cause if I if I'm being completely honest. But the game itself was blockbuster in terms of the mix between the content creators as well as the actual legends of the game that were there. I mean, flipping out the names on that pitch today was crazy. Drogba, Azard, Makalele, Kaka, uh, Roberto Carlos, David Villa. Come on. Have I missed anyone? <laughs> it was pretty, pretty crazy. And a very, very good game. So um, that game, what a beautiful night for the Chelsea faithful, eh? Didier Drogba with two goals, bringing it right back with the... Oh, I've missed, I've missed seeing this, I've missed it. Fantastic goals from Didier. One with his left foot on the edge of the box into the bottom corner. And the second going past the defender, around the goalkeeper walking the ball into the net at 45 years old. Listen, Chelsea, you need to uh, get on the... Uh... Diddy, hello King, are you free Sunday? You have to. Not just him, Eden Hazard. He's not retired. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm convinced. He is still playing football and he's still at the peak of his game. He's still at, the, at his prime. He's not missed a beat. Unbelievable. If it hadn't been for flipping speed tonight, yeah? Speed, listen, you need to know how to hit a ball. <laughs> like, when the ball's coming at you, you need to know how to touch the ball. I mean, because if, if he knew how to do that, Eden Hazard would have had about 10 assists tonight. Unbelievable from Eden Hazard. Just Makalele, class, class. You know, absolute class, shutting things down in, 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 only, in the only way you can. But overall, a fantastic night. And the others as well. All the content creators that played, brilliant stuff. Um, you know, fantastic overall. So, very, very good game. The Chelsea faithful made us proud. Uh, but, without further ado, let's get cracking into the day's happening. We're going to start off with Nicholas Jackson. He spoke. And there's a few things that he said that were quite interesting. But what he has said has caught my eye. So let's get into it without any hesitation. Here it is. He's saying, to quote, if you think of all the strikers that came here, you would not want to come here. If you think about the strikers that come here and people say they're not good enough, you would think there is no need for me to come here. But... I was brought up to be challenged and don't listen to other people and just do the thing that's the most important. That's playing for the team and make the team win and being in a good relationship with the players and the coach and everybody. So good so far, right? Or so far so good. <laughs> but that's not what really caught my eye. Some good stuff there, but this, this is what caught my eye. When asked if criticism bothers him, when I first came, it did. La Liga is not like this. But now, after talking to the coach and realizing the most important thing is us, I don't care about these things anymore. Brilliant. That's what I want to hear. This is exactly like I said a few weeks ago, if you remember, when I was talking about players that get caught up within criticism and then they start allowing it to get to their heads. What Nicholas Jackson has just said is the only solution. And I'm happy that he has seen it this way because if he genuinely sees it this way and he puts it to practice, he will succeed. 100%. So it makes me happy hearing a player like that say these words. Even, even... If I'm the one giving criticism, I would say to players, right, if I'm saying something that they don't like, for example, if I'm criticizing Nicholas Jackson and he doesn't like what, what I've got to say, but cool, block it out. T take it on board, but don't let it affect you. Don't let it get to a point where, oh my God, no, I am I'm a, like, I'm rubbish. Like no, like, no, you need to be able to take it on the chin, build that thick skin and then prove yourself right. 
As I've said before, don't think about proving other people wrong. That's not the aim. Prove yourself right. That's all that matters. So I hear this and I can see that he's going down that route. Fantastic. That's what I want. That's how you get the mentality. That's how you build yourself into a beast, into a monster. And it begins to show in your performances. It begins to show in your games. So fantastic. If he's able to see this in this way, happy days. Happy days. He's learned really well. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, with Nicholas Jackson, him saying that. I'm happy. I'm happy. It shows me that here he's checked in. So fantastic. Fantastic from um, Nicholas Jackson. And to be honest, I have to say, from before the Africa Cup of Nations to after the Africa Cup of Nations, since he's come back, his demeanors look different. It's like he has come out his shell a little bit. It's like he's... Um, He's showing a little bit more personality. You know, we've seen some of the antics that he's done and all that, but he's showing a little bit more chest, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy. Very happy to hear that. So um, hopefully that reflects in his performances. Keep it up. Now, Pochettino said something very, very interesting too, and I liked what I heard here as well. So uh, it's all lining up pretty well for Sunday. But here's what he said, and um, I have to ask the question. I wonder where he got this from. Finals is not about to play finals. It's about to win the finals. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder where he got that one from. Where did he get that one from? Um, it was from this, wasn't it? From this clip here, where Jose, and I can't play it, but he says finals are not to be played. Finals are to win. That was after Chelsea won the Carabao Cup final. It was the uh, the Capital One Cup back then um, against Tottenham, managed by Pochettino. <laughs> so I don't know if Poch was next to him when he heard it and he was like, yeah, you know what? He's bloody right. He just beat me. So uh, maybe he remembered. I'm glad Poch is now so starting to sound like an actual Chelsea manager. Fantastic. Good to see. <laughs> it better reflect on Sunday, though. We better be winning this final. You know, like I, I completely agree with the fact that finals are not to be played. With a final, those 90 minutes, you don't care how it's done, as long as it's done. I couldn't care if we had to park five 747s or four A380s in front of the goal, right? I don't care. I don't care if we have to pass along our back, our back line to protect a 1-0 lead for 85 minutes. I don't care. <laughs> I'd, I'd be bothered about that in the Premier League to an extent because you, you can't do that week in, week out. But uh, if you haven't got the capacity for it, which I don't think we truly have at the moment. But for one game, 90 minutes, I couldn't care less. So um, a final, it's about who lifts that trophy. So I'm hoping Sunday is going to be our day. I saw a stat earlier on. Chelsea have lost their last five consecutive Wembley final appearances, right? No team has ever lost six. And this is crazy to think that from 2007, when the new Wembley opened, up until 2015, right? Or 20, yeah, 2015. Those years, we were basically winning every single final we were coming in. Every, every game at Wembley, yep, it's a Chelsea win. Chelsea win. Chelsea win. Chelsea win. And then all of a sudden it turned to Chelsea loss. Chelsea loss. Chelsea loss. <laughs> no team has lost six in a row. That can't be us on Sunday, man. And you know what? When you look on paper, the chances are that is what's going to happen. I can't, I can't think like that. For a final, anything is possible in a final. I'm sorry, no. It, ca it can't happen. I can't have six consecutive Wembley final losses. No. 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 I'm not, I'm not having it. So, that's that. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Now we start moving to some of the other news. Starting off at Chelsea. This is insane. Not surprised, but insane. Chelsea set new Premier League high by charging £5,000 for one ticket for the visit of Manchester United. The club are also charging £3,000 for the game against Tottenham and over £2,000 for the FA Cup tie against Championship Leeds United. Welcome to the dugout club. The dugout club are the seats that are directly behind the dugout, basically, where the Chelsea staff and players sit. The, the, the first, I think, three rows or four 
that is the dugout club. If you realize, if you have realized, um, you'd see a lot of empty seats in there this season. Yeah, I wonder why. Because they weren't willing to pay some of the flipping prices that were coming up, uh, you know, to buy uh, those, those tickets. And now they're getting raised even higher. £5,000 to sit there. Why? Because you're behind the dugout against Man United. You best believe. L listen, we have to be truthful. For me, it's ridiculous, right? But it's not a surprise. Because you're going to find maybe four, five, six people that do it. <laughs> Just do it. So you're going to get, imagine, like, imagine if 10 people decided to do that, yeah? That's 50k that has walked in just from 10 seats. 50k. You're going to find people that will buy it. But for it to sell out, I just don't think that's going to happen. Because when you look in terms of value, it's not worth it. If this was Manchester City with a dugout club, yeah, perhaps I could say that will be a sellout. Because the value is there. They know that sitting there behind that team, that, that coach, that dugout, with some huge personalities, is a, is a mind-blowing experience, right? You're, you're next to greatness. You might pay 5k for that. You're coming to Stamford Bridge. We're 10th in the league and flipping, you know, a bunch of young players that want to prove themselves. So this is 5k to sit there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that's just the truth. There's no value that matches this fee. It's, it's, it's crazy. A grand? Yeah, perhaps. But 5k? Wow. <laughs> it's just insane. I don't think it's going to sell out. But we'll wait and see. Now... Thomas Tuchel, Bild have decided to speak about Thomas Tuchel, Bild being a, a German sports outlet, so let's get into what they've said. Thomas Tuchel was extremely surprised and sad about the end to his tenure at Chelsea in 2022. He has consistently raved about London and Chelsea again and again. A return to Stamford Bridge is not unthinkable. <sighs> why, why have we come to this, man? Could have, it could have been so much easier to just keep him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But listen, this is from the German side. I can understand from the German side why they might say that. Let me tell you, Bild, from the London side. Yeah? No chance. <laughs> as I've said countless times, as much as I wouldn't mind, these owners are not going to rehire the guy that they fed up with and sacked basically immediately. So, sorry, <laughs> not happening. But there's more from Bild. Thomas Tuchel would reject a move to West Ham or any London club out of his love for Chelsea. He won't manage another London club. However, he is attracted to Manchester United. I appreciate that. I want to say at the same time, you know, if you love Chelsea, you won't go to United. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not how it works. I get it. Um, and the Premier League is the Premier League and top clubs are top clubs. I understand. And, and look, to be honest, does, to, does Thomas Tuchel owe Chelsea anything? No. He got sacked. So technically he doesn't. Um, I'm not concerned if he goes to Man United. I'm concerned that if he goes to Man United, he actually becomes dangerous there. That's my concern. Realistically, I, I couldn't really be too fussed. If I was younger, yeah, maybe I'd be a bit emotional. I'd be like, what? Man United? What? Or, or if you went to Tottenham, what? Tottenham? Like, I, but now, a uh, bit older, I look at it and I think it's a job. It's a job's a job, man. Um, if you owe that club something, I'll give you an example. If Thomas Tuchel ended his contract at Chelsea and it ended amicably, he wanted a new challenge, right? And he goes... Oh, at that point, yeah, don't go to flipping Tottenham. <laughs> don't go to United. Don't go to a direct competitor. No, because at that point, you actually, to an extent, owe something to the club. And the same way the club would owe to, to him. Because it ended amicably and he wanted to pursue new challenges and Chelsea would allow it. But that's not the case. He got sacked. And it ended badly, right? So does he owe anything? No. But I'm more concerned about if he goes to United and it actually clicks. That's what I'm worried about. But that's that. Now, let me know your thoughts down below. 
This is actually a possibility, I've got to be honest. Tuchel to United is a possibility. I've, I've heard what Jim Ratcliffe said about Ten Hag. We'll wait and see how it goes. Um, if results do improve, or if they don't, if they don't, a change will be made. Thomas Tuchel's available. I feel like United will actually pursue. So let's wait and see what happens. Now, in regards to transfers, here's some big news around KDB. Saudi dealmakers will make a big push for KDB this summer. All four PIF-controlled clubs are interested. It will take in excess of £100 million. De Bruyne is a top target alongside Mo Salah, who Al-Hilal won and al Itihad had tried for last summer. Casemiro and Rafael Varane, two others to watch. Al-Hilal also considering the former. al Etihad and al Nasser looking at the latter. So, KDB, where is he going to end up? It's coming to the end of his, well, not the end of his career, but you understand, the latter stages. So um, if he goes to get the bag, he goes to get the bag. But Man, Man City would have to prepare because let me tell you this, KDB is still at the top of his game. And um, that's a big hole to fill um, if you do let him go. I believe Man City can do it, but KDB right now is still offering so much value that I wouldn't want to let him go. But it can be a lot of money that they bring him. So is it best to cash in now before his value does deteriorate? Who knows? Or deplete? Let me know what you think. Personally, I'll be honest. I don't see him moving to Saudi. I, I, I think there will be interest. I think he will be interested. I think he'd listen. But I think he'd want to give one more season, considering the injury he had, one more season at Man City before he makes a move like that. So uh, let's see what happens. Mo Salah, I can see happening more in regards to going to Saudi. So we'll see, especially with the departure of Jurgen Klopp, it could be the right time for Mo Salah to go and get the bag. <laughs> so uh, there's that. Now, that's Mo Salah and KDB. Real Madrid and Bayern Munich, man. These clubs, these clubs. Here's the latest from Florian Plettenberg. There has been a meeting in Munich in recent days between Christoph Frund and Davis's agent, Nick Huosa. The focus was mainly on Davis's, um, Davis's future, which is more open than ever. Personal terms between Real Madrid and Davis are not an issue. Real willing to pay a maximum of 40 to 50 million euros in the summer. Bayern expect Real to heavily push down the price with only one year remaining on the contract. At this stage, Bayern expect him rather to leave the club in summer than to extend his contract beyond 2025. Can I ask something here? If that's the fee, Chelsea, what are we doing? Hello? <laughs> Alfonso Davis, I'm literally expecting to hear 80, 90, 100 million. He's got one year in his contract, and this is the fee that's being discussed. And Real, Real expect Bayern to push it down. What? No, no, sorry. Bayern expect Real to push it down, right? Oh, that makes sense. But we're talking 40, 50 million euros for Alfonso Davis. I, I, I've never done this, but I will do it now. <laughs> Chelsea, what are we doing? Uh, honestly, crazy. Um, but look, just look at how the big clubs operate, man. It winds me up. Just look how they're operating. Look at this. The 26-year-old Theo Hernandez is on FC Bayern's list as a possible replacement for Alfonso Davis, among other candidates. Also, because Hernandez is versatile on the left side, nothing concrete at this stage, but Bayern are already preparing a solution. Finding a decision in the poker game for Davis is one of the first major tasks for the new duo, Erbel and Frund. For Hernandez, one of the best left defenders in the world at this stage, contract with AC Milan is valid until 2026. Listen, Bayern Munich have literally just gone, oh, we're losing Davis. Oh man, what a shame. Okay, um, go and get Theo Hernandez. Why can't my club move like this anymore, man? <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is how you. This is how you do business. This is this is setting levels. You know, you let you let go of an Alfonso Davis and you go and get a Theo Hernandez. I mean, just class class and on top of that there's more about Real Madrid check this this is going to set an example to everybody yeah everyone that's talking about project youth and 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 you know just getting young players in and they're okay with it look look, look how look how big clubs operate yeah look at the elite look, look how they run look how they run watch this 
Real Madrid have offered Tony Cruz a new one-year contract and want him to stay. They consider his return to the German national team a good sign that he'll stay at the club for another season. Absolutely mad. Now, how old is Tony Cruz? I've got it in my head that he's 34. Is he 34? He's 34. He's 34. Real Madrid. Real Madrid are offering Tony Cruz a new one-year deal. 34 years old. Ask yourselves why. Why? Are they crazy? Are they, have they gone do lally? Have they lost their minds? Uh, have they got a condition? Uh, have they gone cuckoo? Uh, tell me. What's the reason? They know. They know. They know what it means. A new one-year deal for Tony Cruz is only going to help if he's still operating at a decent level to be able to th further develop and further extend the development of the others that are coming in behind. The others that are there, Chiuameni and Kamavinga and all these guys, right? Even, even if we're talking Bellingham and all, all these young guys that are molding and you can start to see like they're developing a stature, it comes from looking up to players like this. Modric is still there, although they still think that Modric at the end of the season, it could be the end. But look how long they've kept Modric. Ask yourself, why? Has he been playing? Not frequently, but why is he still there? This is why I look at Chelsea's model and I think this is mad. <laughs> this is mad. What are we doing? You know, you, you, need, you need young players to be able to look up to someone. They're not just someone. Players. It needs to be a small group within that team that have been there and done it and worn the t-shirt that can set the levels and push the younger players to come up to their level. That way, when they step out of the way, no one's got to worry about a thing because people like Jude Bellingham come along and start setting levels. Now Modric can ride off into the sunset. Not a problem, but Real Madrid will still be at the top. That's how you do it. So, Real Madrid setting the example. Absolutely beautiful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, I saw this, and i got to say, uh, I, I got happy. But this is going to be, I think, a little different to last time. What am I on about? Check this out. The English football fans, you're going to like this. That are my age and older, you're going to like this. Uh, for all the foreign ones, you might not know what's going on. And for all the younger ones, you might not know what's going on. Here it is. Green Street 2 could be coming to cinemas soon. Leo Gregory, actor in the first movie, posted a teaser on his Instagram. It is one of the most well-known films about football hooliganism in England. And that was the post on the left-hand side. You can see possibly a new script being written, Green Street, Green Street 2. I can't wait for this. Personally, I can't wait, yeah? Because I remember Green Street 1. And that was such an iconic film. F for its time, was just brilliant. That, Football Factory, I mean, some of the best films, right? But that came out at a time when hooliganism had just died down. So it was still fresh in everyone's memory. It was still almost part of the English culture. <laughs> <laughs> it was a regular thing on a Saturday afternoon that you'd see week in, week out. You see bust ups and fights and it was it was renowned. We've not seen that level of hooliganism since then. Since the first film was released, hooliganism has just gone down. We've not seen it. We've seen little bits pop up, an odd fight here and there, an odd clash. But hooliganism, the firms, the actual organized crime right that was that was happening back then that's all died down so i don't think it's gonna sit with the younger generation like it does with mine they're not really gonna understand <laughs> because they've not grown up watching actual hooliganism Do you know what i mean so i'm not sure if this is actually gonna make sense you know i think it'll be a good film but is it going to hit home like it did before i don't think so
Um, but I'm looking forward to it. If it's if it's coming, I'm looking forward to it. I will be there. Me and all the older lot, we will be there. We will be there. We'll be watching. Don't worry. We'll be uh, you know seeing what 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 have they come up with in 2024 in regards to hooliganism. Gonna be an interesting one. But um, anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And I will catch all of you tomorrow. Do not forget the preview for the Carabao Cup final. Chelsea versus Liverpool. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell to be notified of it. And the watch along on Sunday where we, we, we will be watching the final together. And we'll see how it's all going to go down. And hopefully we actually end up with a trophy. So catch the preview tomorrow. I will see all of you then. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one, people. Take care and peace.